We're joined by the Cabinet Secretary in charge of roads, railways, ports, airspace, airports, uh, what else? Bridges, all those things. The Cabinet Secretary for Roads and Transport, the Honorable Kipchumba Murkamen. Good morning, sir. Good morning, uh, Eric. How are you doing? Uh, fine, thank you. And good to see you after a very long time. Mm -hmm. I think the last time I was here is more than a year ago. Yeah. And uh, the last time I did a media interview has been very long. So mm. I'm very happy to be here uh, to just, not just to engage you, but to engage the people of Kenya. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Uh, how did you get in, Mojimua? From our front gate, right? Yes. You saw what? I, no, the, yes, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, what, that's a very good question. Myself. I understood your question. <laughs> and I was very happy yeah. to see uh, the works that are ongoing in terms of uh, uh, rehabilitation of this, uh, 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 the road below the expressway. You mm. remember the last time uh, the people of Kenya were, wanted to know what I'm going to do insofar as this road is concerned. We awarded a contract which is still running until um, end of next year. Yes, end of next year, mm. because it was one one year, six months, uh, kind of a contract. And then um, I'm very happy for the progress that has been made in terms of the road itself. But the drainage needs to be dealt with, and you can see the drainage works are ongoing. That's why access to your building is uh, is a challenge. But that drainage works, actually, you will be surprised. It has something to do with the airport. And I know everybody has been talking about the airport, mm. uh, partly because of how this construction was done and how the drainage was done. We have a problem of flooding at GKIA. So uh, when we discovered that during the... Uh, uh, um, the El Nino uh, mm. process. We have also asked Kenna to work together with uh, JKIA mm. because JKIA itself, part of its land is a natural water causeway. Mm. So we want to make sure that beside draining it along the road, we provide a proper drainage through the JKIA itself. Because, you know, water, interestingly, you can't resist. Uh, even if you try to divert, even if someone sells you land and it was a... Uh, uh, it's a wetland. It's wetland. Or it is a cause for seasonal rivers. Uh, unfortunately, it just happens that uh, there will be a point, a point in time that the water will have to come through there. So at JKIA, we, we want also to expand. You remember the committee that I established? They mm. proposed that we have to uh, cr create proper drainage through the airport itself because the more we through the airport to where across to the other side of the airport to the drains along the along the river up to uh, what do you call um, what do you call the river on the other side uh, at the river at the river, at the river yes mm. particularly I have a particular spot I was going to yeah yeah, yeah the other side it's at the river. Mm. But at uh, a certain stream, a certain stream, okay. not down here. You remember the place where there is a lot of uh, sewage. Uh, Ruai. Ruai, yes, exactly. Mm. Thank you. So it has to go all the way to the side of Ruai. Uh, the committee proposed that uh, we need to set aside resources to make sure that the drainage through the airport is is clearer, to make sure that there will be no stagnation of water within the airport. So the works that you've seen in Mombasa Road are ongoing. The contractor, the contractors, because there are two contractors, mm. are on schedule. They still have the time and they started with the most critical part of it, which was the road itself. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Eh? I know, I know when during construction, mm -hmm. you, you must be glad, uh, Eric, mm -hmm. that uh, at least there is money to construct, we allocated money to construct this road. At the time when we have a big, big challenge in terms of resource allocation to the Ministry of Roads, particularly mm -hmm. construction, if it were not for the fact that this is rehabilitation, if mm -hmm. it was fresh construction, will not be able, what we call development funds, will not be able to do what you can see here. But because part of the rehabilitation process and therefore some resources were set aside from the road maintenance levy, mm. Kenya were able then to allocate resources to do it. Remember, right. initially, this road we were supposed, we were told uh, before I came to office that we were supposed to spend about nine billion to uh, redo the road below. Yep. Um, I instructed Kenya to look at it in a manner that they, we can achieve a modest uh, 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 rehabilitation. Uh, rehabilitation without really uh, using the resources that we have because the resources are very little. Mm. That's why we are looking at about 3 billion shillings to, to do both the drainage and to do the road. And, and to the road uh, itself. Uh, yes. Mushimo, did you ask the question why those things did not happen before you uh, go to office? Be, before to go to office? Yes, well, because the expressway was constructed. Uh, yes. Part of the plan was as you when you as you construct the expressway, you shall mm. deal with the lower road. Correct. By the time you finish the expressway, you also finish the lower road. Uh, but if you're getting to office, 
lower road was not done and did you ask the question why yes i was told uh, the answer I was given uh, is that the utilities that were being relocated from below uh that is electricity fiber optic uh all the water uh, utilities some of them took far too long mm -hmm. for 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 us to relocate them remember that uh, our road corridor uh, our corridor yeah road corridor in terms of utilities in the past everybody used to put their own mm -hmm. yeah, electricity is doing their thing water is doing their thing so now we've provided one duct that uh, can carry out can carry all those utilities in fact let me tell you part of the problems we're still facing by these contractors who are now on site mm. is the fact that the utilities are yet to be relocated and they are busy they have to work with Kenya Power to relocate power to uh, proper uh, 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 duct that they are providing themselves the other thing i'm told is that the responsibility uh, was not transferred to the contractor Mm -hmm. um, it was that our contribution as uh, the state, we took over the responsibility of taking care of all these utilities uh, because our contribution to the construction of the road was you provide the land and also provide uh, move the utilities from the road. Mm -hmm. That way, uh, the contractor did not have an obligation to rehabilitate the road below. In fact, when we, were when we wanted to do the rehab, initially, the plan that we found in place mm -hmm. was for the contractor to do the rehabilitation and be paid the nine billion. Mm -hmm. So we said we need to do a competitive bidding. And as a result of the competitive bidding, mm -hmm. even though we are located $3 billion as a budget, the one contractor bid 1.1, the other 1.6. So we saved about 300 million shillings. Yes, 300 million shillings from from uh, the three billion that were allocated because of the competitive. Was there a change in specifications? Mm -hmm. Yes, we had to reduce, of course, the specifications okay. from from the nine billion expected because the nine billion had elaborate uh, structures of uh, of uh, decoration, beautification, which is important mm -hmm. in an urban road. But we have to live within our own means. We had to make sure that uh, the specification we give are good enough to carry out the responsibility that we need to have a good road without also the elaborate uh, processes of uh, beautification. Okay. Well, Ziri, even as we talk about these things, I think you'll have many, many conversations around these specifications that you're giving, and this is just Mombasa Road. But it doesn't matter where we look, mm -hmm. you will find a project mm -hmm. that started at whatever, and it's gotten to whatever level, mm -hmm. and has not been completed. Absolutely. And so the question is, what is happening with that? You're in the unfortunate position whereby you mm. came in and some of these things had already happened. Mm, yes. Again, unfortunate, but it still now is on your shoulders. Enterprise Road, I don't even know how many years. Yeah. Certain parts of Ngong Road, Ngong we don't know when those yeah. will be finished. Yeah. This road that's heading out, Athi River, heading yeah. out in this direction, it's mm. been 15 years yeah. easily. Mm. Every place in the country has an example of, of uh, things of that have started and didn't finish. Unfinished, finish. work. yes. unfinished works is a big deal. So unfinished works in terms of what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And then even new projects that are being commissioned. Is there a conversation that is being had about completion of projects before we start being ambitious in uh, new projects? I truly appreciate your question, but you're making it light. Mm. Shall it, I make it heavier? Because yeah, it, it can is, get heavier. The, the situation is worse than <laughs> mm. you are painting. Mm. Uh, uh, I'll give you the statistics. We have uh, we have about uh, roads that are pending that are worth 700 billion shillings. Mm. So that is a portfolio of the infrastructure that is pending. Uh, you've heard the story of... Uh, and every county has a road mm. that is pending. Every county. Every county, mm -hmm. except the, means uh, expect started, started but not completed. Not completed. Uh, uh, so those are pending projects that are that are that have been pending from the the re the most recent one is from 2021, mm. but some have been pending from 2014, 2015. Uh, I can name roads. You mm. know, if you go a road in uh, Tarakanidi, it's called Chakarika Marimanti. If you go to a road in Nandi that is called Kopere Timboroa or uh, the, 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 the one that is in uh, uh, a county like uh, Kagamega that has been pending in Shinyalu from 2016. There's one in Loitokto, Elasi Taveta. The Elasi Taveta is not pending because uh, the process of uh, procurement had not been complete and I'll come back to okay. that. I'll tell you what had happened to Elasi and Jukini. Okay. But this, all these roads, including the one that is in Gong going to Suswa mm. uh, has been pending now for about three or four years yeah. mm. 
What happened is that uh, sometime in 2013, when we came in as Jubilee Administration, we had an ambitious project of road 10,000, mm -hmm. delivering 10,000 kilometers of roads across the country. Yes. In that process, many models of construction were established. Mm. One of them is uh, what they call uh, low volume seal projects, mm. where you just uh, construct the road to a certain level and then put a thin layer of a tarmac road, mm -hmm. of a tarmac on top of it. Mm. And uh, most of these low volume seal projects were to make us deliver better. Yeah. But, and then thereafter, there were other normally constructed roads, especially highways. And then in 2017, post 2017, we established what a number of other roads, including what's called Mau Mau Road. Uh, Mamao roads in the in the Mount Kenya uh, counties. Yeah. All these projects were done uh, in the hope that the government of Kenya was going to continue accessing credit the way they did. Remember, in 2016, we were able to access Eurobond, uh, easily budget support from J J Chinese government, lo various loans to do various roads. So it was done with the possibility of either borrowing internationally or from the market locally. Mm. And then things started going south from 2018, 2019. Um, then, you know, we were not able to access capital. Pressure for the debt came in. And then you know, but political pressure was also within the former president to continue allocating certain projects. So certain projects were still allocated uh, uh, and awarded. Now the problem is that every year from 2015 mm -hmm. Uh, our our financial needs for development project have been 150 billion, but every year we've been allocating 50 billion from the budget. The mm -hmm. only possible uh, achieve, and sometimes through supplementary, reduce it to below 50 billion. So when we came to office, we realized that we have 150 billion of certificates of works already done mm. that has not been paid. In the last one year, you will be shocked. We've only been able to pay of this 50 billion, we've been 150, 150. 150 billion, we've mm. been able to pay about 30 billion. But even now, if we pay the 30 billion, again, the prices increase. Because of what? Oh. Uh, you pay a contractor, he continues two or three kilometers. Then makes the next certificate. Mm. So now we are back again to 155, 156 billion. But that's not enough. There is now uncalculated claims that have already been made of mm. idle equipment, mm. of, uh, you know, all kind of things. There are contractors that have gone to court, yeah, and won. It, there's one particular contractor that I'm dealing with, and mm. I'm really, I really hope that I, as an officer of the court, I have to be very careful what I say about the judiciary. Mm. But for a court of law, to award a contractor 10 billion shillings, yeah, on a contract that was 2 billion, mm. yeah, even if we failed as a, as, a, as a road agency to pay them and they had idle equipment, their all interest, and they had borrowed from the bank, then Duplam rule, rule in the bank uh, says that even if you borrow a loan, you can only pay twice, yep. which is about $4 billion. There's one particular contract I don't want to mention. He has, he has a number of awards. He even wanted to commit to civil jail the DG of Kenna. He's been awarded $10 billion. I, it's, I feel very sad that such a decision was made. Of course, we are appealing and we're going through the process. But I, th the point I'm trying to make is that this year, the budget that we put in place was uh, 61 billion for development mm. in the supplementary budget that we just passed we reduced it to 46 billion against the, again the pending bill of of 150 in that disbursements that have been done this year this financial year six billion mm. so we are still waiting as a as a as a ministry about 40 billion to pay some contractors for them to go to site. The situation we are in as a country mm. is not that one that we manufactured or we created. It's an economic situation. It is a situation that deals with, uh, when we talk about the debt is a burden for all of us, you feel it in the road sector. What, what, what is the decision that we made? Um, collectively in the cabinet, we agreed that the first priority for government now is to pay the uh, Eurobond. Okay. We first pay the Eurobond. So, uh, how do we achieve that? We needed to give our budget to become, uh, uh, we needed fiscal discipline and mm. the budget therefore must be able to support itself. That is why our road sector has been allocated for development only for $6 billion. Mm. As a result of the same, now uh, we, 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 I had to do something. We had to do something. We had to think outside the box. 
in 20 in december last year we started a process of engaging our development partners china government uh, co chinese contractors out of the 700 billion worth of roads chinese contractors uh, are carrying out up to 400 billion worth of the roads 400 and something billion of the worth of the roads and we mm. said can we have a conversation with the china government and ask them is there a possibility for us to work together to find a financial solution to support these contractors so that they complete the roads and as a government of Kenya, we can be able to pay as a loan as we progress. That discussion uh, gave me an opportunity perhaps to be the cabinet secretary or a minister, even in the continent, to visit China three times. Mm. And um, for, for that kind of negotiation, the Minister of in, uh, Treasury uh, and ourselves have been there so many times. And... Uh, Finally, we went with the president and we met President Xi Jinping and uh, thanks to the very effort of President William Ruto, talking to him, talking to guiding us, guiding the process, we now are in a position where we are almost agreeing on a facility to be able to support us. So that facility, of course, has to meet the requirements and the processes of the Chinese uh, administration. Which are? And, and, and I mean, I'm saying, you know, what type of projects are they going to finance? What, what feasibility study and so forth but is the, a, re the already, reason already started project projects I mean, already begun yes, you don't need yes, a new feasibility yes, study in, no, to they, complete they, they have to come and confirm because it's not enough for us to just make an application and say these roads first they have to confirm second they cannot finance roads that are an 80 90 percent complete they want to see that those are projects that are basically at their commencement stage mm. so that it can fit it because it's a new idea we are proposing mm. it must fit uh, their their way or existing structures of financing so without saying too much mm. uh, i told parliament uh, recently when they called me last week mm. that uh, because of that effort and because of the good name of our president the diplomatic relations that the president has built and our efforts in the ministry and consistently uh, having conversation with our friends we think that in less than two or three months we should be able to 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 close in on a facility that should make uh, up to 60 70 percent of our contractors to go on site and if that is the case because i believe it it's going to be and that's mm. the hope we are holding on to mm. uh, uh, without appearing to speak like a preacher mm. um the resources now that have been allocated in the budget of locally raised resources mm -hmm. can now support our local contractors or their bid the because theirs is very it's a, theirs is about 30 to 40 no on the pending mm -hmm. let's start the other 300 ultimately when we finish the roads mm -hmm. but at the moment of the 150 billion to clear the about deals. about of the 150 billion 40 billion or so is supposed to go to local. uh no no it's supposed to go to compensation, land compensation for us to complete the road. About uh, of the 100, about 60, 60 something goes to the foreign contractors. 30 something per, uh, billion goes to our local contractors. You're saying, Shimura, that this is not necessarily a problem of our making it, you know, economic factors. Yes. But then, when a government progressively goes to parliament and says, we are starting a new project in the next financial year, yeah. we are starting another new project in the next financial year, it gets to a tune of close to a trillion shillings of ongoing road projects across the country mm. without a clear vision on where the money is going to come from. Is that not irresponsibility from everybody? It from is, the people it, who are advising the government, and that's the engineers in your ministry, mm -hmm. to the people who are in your ministry who mm -hmm. then advise the cabinet, mm -hmm. to parliament. I, I think the, 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 it's a collective failure. I agree with you because uh, in terms of procurement, this was, uh, first of all, let me say this. When we arrived, it was 900 billion. Mm -hmm. So we did away with some of the projects that had not started. They have been, there's some level of commitment, but has not started. Mm -hmm. We have also refused now to progress PPP projects that are a component of a burden to of the taxpayer. government taxpayer we want projects that look like the expressway because the contractor in the expressway and the developer took full responsibility without any guarantee financial guarantee from the government mm. Mm. now we, we we reduced all of them it came to about 700 now from the 700 you sit down and ask yourself uh, the question that how did we manage to do procurement without the procurement law says that you must have the resources for the project Already. before you procure yes. so um you know you know there is a competition between 
uh, the political promise of a government that had promised 10,000 kilometers, mm. okay? The pressure from the Wananji, <laughs> and at the same time, there is also... Kilometers. So I think they progressed to, in the hope, you know, in the hope that they will raise the resources and things will go the way they had gone before. They, you see, broke, you see, they broke the law to meet... I, 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 they didn't break the law, though, because they provide... You know, you can't break the law if you provide a budget from parliament. Mm. When you already provide a budget for the road, and you say, this road will be financed in three years, but in the first one year, we are putting 200 million or 500 million. Mm. You have not broken the law. But where you are sitting as a government, yeah, where you are sitting as a government, you know, or you ought to have known, that, that the, year, forecast, the forecast into the future mm -hmm. is going to be a challenge. That is why when we came to office, we became realistic. We said we will not commence any new project unless that project is based on a development partner, say World Bank, mm -hmm. African Development Bank, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, uh, our, our African Development Bank, World Bank, and other development partners who are willing to finance that project to the end. Some of the projects we've started in this administration are only those that the negotiation were ongoing towards uh, financing, financing by development partners. We are unable to start new projects that are coming from our budget. Okay. And so we had to stay fast, stay fast of all reduce we reduce to 700 billion then we move to the next stage stop don't continue if how you, do we avoid if, this in if, the future? if uh, 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 um, eric i've told the president this and i've told my colleagues in the cabinet uh, i am likely to be a very unpopular cabinet secretary mm. if the people of kenya do not appreciate yeah that the resources are not there for us to do the roads people keep telling me oh you know uh, we don't want you to talk to us. Uh, our yeah, road no has told from 2016, yes, 2017. Yes. We want to see the road progressing. And in fact, you must have followed the very f uh, hot debate we had with members of parliament. Mm -hmm. Most of whom are in rallies, in funerals and other places have castigated me for refusing to allocate resources to their roads. Mm. And I, I went back to them and asked them, where in the constitution does it say that the cabinet secretary allocates the roads? It is this house, it's parliament that allocates the resources. And ask them, can we go through the budget? How much have you allocated to roads for six billion? How much have you dispersed? Eventually, when we left there, we had a consensus. All of them had a consensus and told me that we hope the efforts you are putting and the government of Kenya, led by the president, from our support from our friends, can be able to bear fruits because uh, we are staring at ghost projects in our villages and rural areas that and the is same what thing we I have. have currently that is what we have i yes. mean when you talk about a trillion shillings worth of projects yes. started yes approved by parliament with some budget appropriated yeah if you appropriate if you are a parliament and you appropriate uh, money for five kilometers of a yes. 20 kilometer road yeah. this year yeah. and you expect that you're going to allocate another five kilometers next until year, you finish in three and four you years. don't allocate the yeah. next financial year aren't you just being crazy that is why i if you are <laughs> a road engineer a yeah. head of a roads agency yeah and you know that this is what has come and then you bring in a new project yeah. in the next financial year yeah. for another project for another road knowing full well that the previous road that you started has not been allocated project are you as an engineer head of a roads agency not the the, 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 crazy? the engineers are totally not to blame mm -hmm. our engineers and our ministry have a responsibility to design all our roads in readiness for resources when it is achieved and as a ministry uh, including uh, myself i am more excited if i go to parliament and tell them i have this number of roads should you find resources please budget for it mm. once i present the roads i always get back with a lot of disappointment that we don't have money to do this but i cannot stop presenting these roads because just in case the resources are found that then the, the roads will be allocated money now i let, call let, bs just, just, Hold just, on. just wait I, I call bs yeah mwaziri yeah before budget goes to parliament yes cabinet discusses budget. absolutely the minister in charge of transport sits in that and absolutely. presents his ministry's budget correct to cabinet correct why would you as a minister knowing that I have 10 pending roads yeah and this is the only amount of money that's available in the next year's budget why would you go to cabinet and push for another road that you know there's no money for no you can you can still go go to the cabinet uh, eric you know cabinet or budgeting process are competition for resources
You can't go there as a minister of roads and transport, folding your hands and saying, I am, uh, I am, I have uh, sacrificed. We just wait. You say, I have sacrificed roads. Uh, you guys uh, allocate that money to education. But not so First, not, I'm just saying, you go with that. You're a wish, saying, uh, you're saying I, have, I have 10 ongoing roads. Uh, that's what, Please give me money to uh, complete absolutely. my ongoing No, no, no. Roads. I agree with you. Mm. I'll come to that. Mm. But I'm saying you usually go with a basket of requests but you must put your priorities right you must say that you must complete what you have first before you start a new one that's why when this administration came to government to office you remember we announced openly that we are not going to start new projects new projects okay. we are only going to deal with uh, all the projects to complete the existing projects mm -hmm. and if we are lucky as an administration to complete the existing legal project the transformation in the country will be immense can we look it will at be immense then? so uh, le let me just complete uh, yeah. the question you had asked okay so therefore uh you know i i fear saying i fear saying that uh, here because I, I have received enough bashing when i say this is inherited problems mm. and when i say inherited problems i am not saying i'm blaming cs masharia or or or, or, or whoever uru. was the president uru it's a fact a government is a going concern okay even us who are in office now will push this agenda that we have at the end of this administration we will hand over to another administration they will have to come and deal with problems that we leave behind or and finish the projects that we deal with so no matter what was the reason why we are in the situation we are in i cannot i can't tell the people of kenya since it was started by other administration therefore it's not my problem and i'm not going to do n nothing about it mm -hmm. we have worked very hard to do something about it. and as i told you uh holding on to this hope and faith that in two three months our conversations our friends uh, bears fruit we should be able in 2024 this coming year from march april there to return as many contractors back to site as possible to complete. this is to, to complete these projects and i say i say this eric even the next four even if it is by 2027 we complete these projects we will have achieved immense transformation for our nation let me give you an example uh, of what I now do in the office. Mm. The first thing I, I do in the office, what we did, as I told you, is reduce the portfolio from 900 billion to 700. Reduce, remove uh, non-performing or non-committed or unstarted projects. In the 700 that we have at the moment, I have to engage with our contractors. In fact, I even have consultation with the banks. My friend, and I say this with utmost respect, many of the contractors come to my office crying, tears. Mm. Because either they are, the banks are selling their houses or, you know, the, some even have been admitted to hospitals. People are suffering. Mm. But what we have to do is to call the banks and tell them, please be patient. We are waiting for these resources. We are going to pay you. We even negotiate with the banks. We are going to pay you uh, from the amount we get because we have to distribute across the contractors. We'll pay you 20 million. Please don't harass this contractor. We'll pay you this much. And I want to appreciate a number of our local banks who have uh, been uh, supportive in this endeavor. Number two. I have also had to have one-on-one -on -one conversation and, and uh, uh, consultation with contractors. I give you an example of Thika Magumu Road. Thika Magumu Road had been stalling for three years. Uh, the, we were told to terminate the contract. And my people in Kenya uh, process came to the PS, came to me now to approve a termination of the contract. You just see an termination and we advertise. But I called the contractor and told him, my friend, if I terminate your contract, you are a foreign contractor and you have other contracts that are about development partners, it's going to be a reputational risk with uh, on you. Can you do something about it? And because of just that kind of conversation, we delivered 30 kilometers of the road from Tika going to Magumo of the 56. So it has, it has become now, uh, I am sitting down to negotiate uh, land related issues, telling the contractors uh, or the locals, we will pay you, National Land Commission, we commit as government to pay when we get the money, allow the contractor to progress because development partners put money into these roads. Mm -hmm. So it's become now, when we get even five kilometers of a road to progress, we say hallelujah because of the challenges that we go through but it is not that uh, gloomy as i said mm. uh, at least for the one year of uh, in the road sector we've been able to work with those developers
development partners. Number two, on the maintenance side, I, I need to distinguish the two. Mm. On the maintenance side, we have ring fenced resources under what is called road maintenance levy. Yeah. That is why you see Mombasa Road is ongoing. That's why you see uh, what we've done with the road maintenance levy ro uh, resources mm. in the urban areas, towns like Embu before Madaraka Day, Kericho mm. that we did, uh, places like uh, Mandera, we've delivered some roads. By the way, interestingly, under Kura, we've delivered 234 kilometers of roads across the country thanks to uh, innovatively use of the road maintenance levy mm. to improve the state of the road from graveling to uh, tarmac, what is called state improvement because mm. of the process that, that we had to innovatively apply road maintenance levy to save the roads in urban areas. And uh, uh, thankfully, uh, working with the Kura, mm. uh, we have done an, a bit of work to make sure that we, we support our uh, urban roads. In the now that you've mentioned the road maintenance mm. levy, I've yes. got to throw in this yes, question. Yes, yes, yes. Your colleagues in um, leadership, yes. the leader of majority in uh, National Assembly and Senate, yeah. sat in this committee, the NADCO, yes. <laughs> which has come up with a recommendation yeah. to reduce yeah. the road maintenance levy. Yeah. Do you support that? I absolutely oppose it mm. vehemently. Right. Uh, you know, I opposed it on the floor of the house recently when they called me. Mm. Uh, and uh, I think, I don't think any member of National Assembly, any, it doesn't matter whether it is uh, uh, Kimani Chungwa or uh, or Pio Wandai or, uh, or a special national assembly because they are the place where they do appropriation of finance. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Aaron in the Senate and, uh, and uh, Matsayo, none of them can support a reduction of road maintenance levy. And I made the case in Parliament recently that the road maintenance levy, the figure that we have of 18 shillings per litre now, was, was, uh, was put in place in 2016. At that point in time, the prices of petrol per litre was 90 shillings. Now the price is 210 and we are still putting aside 18 shillings. The cost of construction of roads have gone high. The road network has become uh, enhanced. In fact, I made the case in Parliament that at the moment we are staring a very serious crisis. In 2013, uh, we established in the ten, road 10,000, we were managed to deliver 5,000 kilometers of roads under CARA. Mm -hmm. And under CARA, the resources that are given under road maintenance levy, CARA is given 22% uh, uh, and 10%, which is 32% of the resources. All of these 32% of resources is divided equally in every constituency. In this year, the, every constituency is getting 64 million shillings in, across the country. Mm -hmm. And most of this resource, 64 million, is used to maintain Maram roads. Yes. No, because our members of National Assembly have a role in the maintenance of these Maram roads, thanks to the uh, uh, constituency roads committees uh, that play a role in this uh, process. In fact, there was a day we attempted to ask them to maintain the tarmac roads they refused. Now, you have 5,000 5, kilometers of roads that have been constructed but not being maintained. To the, the, what does that mean? These are often roads. If you travel across the country, you will find that particularly those that were delivered using uh, low volume seal, you will find that they are full of portals. Yep. Yeah, because there is no maintenance plan. Now, I have told members of parliament, I, I request the speaker, that early next year, we must have a honest conversation on how fast the resources are going to be raised. Are we going to continue with the RMLF 18 shillings per litre, despite the fact that the cost of construction have gone high and the cost of fuel is higher? Mm. Uh, is it going to be feasible? Already, Kenya, which receives 40% of the resources, and they have something called performance-based uh, uh, contract and mm. management, which you give a contractor to take care of a road for uh, two, three years, mm. is now again strained because Kenya network has gone higher and the resources have not increased. Well, you've answered so it. the the the, the, the yeah. simple fact is that mm. what that discussion that happened in Nadco, yeah, was unfortunate because they, to the contrary, they should be adding five shillings, not reducing not five reducing shillings. It. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.